I'm from the Department of Physiology. I'm a lecturer there, but I'm also the Programme Director for the BSc in Human Health and Disease. And I'm going to give you a short presentation to give you an idea of, of the objectives of the degree, what's involved, why you might get involved, and what you might get out of it in the end. So a good place to start is to outline to you the objectives that we have with this degree. And really what our objectives are, are to uh, include is the provision of, uh, of a programme focused on developing an expert appreciation in a number of, of areas, particularly focusing on the structure and function of the human body and health, signs and symptoms of disease, the molecular basis of disease, and the current and future treatment of disease. So this, uh, having this sort of idea in mind in terms of objectives, you can see it's a science degree, you're going to earn, learn much about basic human biology, but also then try to apply that knowledge to the biomedical sciences, that's in terms of the disease context. Another question you might have, and it's a good question to pose, is, okay, understand the BSc in Human Health and Disease, we're going to look at human biology and then use a platform there to understand health and disease, but how will we interact with this material? And so I'm just outlining to you here that the learning format that we use is varied, and we aim to provide teaching through a combination of lectures, practicals, tutorials, and group project work. So lectures, is a main, uh, lectures are a mainstay of university life, but we are conscious of the fact that the lecture format originally was popularised because there was a restricted access to the, 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 the resource, to the material. So that's a lecture that would be given by a lector, and hence they held the book and they read the book to the uh, students. There's still very much a place for lectures, but as you know, we have access to the books, we have online materials, and so we can make a much more interactive curriculum by expanding out from the lecture as the base of, of the teaching approach to include then tutorials. There are about 35 students in each year of the degree, and a lot of the curriculum, a lot of the, the, the courses taken as part of the curriculum are just solely for students of human health and disease. So there, that allows for a kind of interactive environment where I can ask questions of the students, or my colleagues can, and they can ask questions of us. And this allows lectures to become more interactive, but also is suitable then for what we call tutorials. Obviously, being a, a Bachelor of Science degree, uh, there's a focus also on um, doing practical laboratory work. So that's another area and, uh, or method of teaching that we use is the practical class and something that we use throughout the programme is group project work. So maybe uh, in some of the modules you might be challenged to design a poster in a group on a specific disease topic, that type of thing. So it's quite a mix, it's challenging and uh, the assessment because we have this interactivity and project work, the assessment, there is quite a significant amount of continuous assessment, so we try to move away from putting all of the weight on end of year examinations. So with this kind of description of the content, what we're going to cover, and uh, the approach, what can you expect? And I would hope that it would be an exciting, interesting, and practically relevant programme of study. And I hope that it would be of relevance to your future ambitions, whether they lie in, in, in whichever field they lie, but we can imagine maybe people would be interested in perhaps doing medicine uh, through a graduate entry programme or going on and working as re medical researchers. And so with this in mind, we, we would aim to developing you a deep and wide-ranging knowledge of biomedical sciences and within that knowledge to have an associated core skill set which would be relevant to pursuing a career in biomedicine and the health sciences. Central to this is 
uh, core skill set including uh, proficiency in laboratory technique but I must emphasise that the degree does not set out to uh, form technicians. The objective is not to produce people who are great technicians. Yes, you should be competent and uh, show a skill set in the area of laboratory technique. But we also want you to be able to analyse the data from work in laboratories, to come up with the questions that lead to the experiments in laboratories, to be able to present the findings both in terms of public presentation and in writing scientific reports. This really all uh, is, uh, all these things really are components of research methodologies. And another aspect of this that is emphasised in the programme is the ethical aspect and also in terms of this asking the right questions and uh, really probing as to the questions that are asked in research, we try to develop you as critical thinkers. Okay? So data analysis, designing research projects, this type of thing helps to encourage this. So who is involved in this degree? As I say, I'm from physiology. The degree is led from the Department of Physiology. The Department of Physiology is a part of the School of Medicine, but the degree is run in partnership with the School of Biochemistry and Immunology. We also interact with other schools and departments in Trinity, and I've listed them here. Chemistry and Maths is a component of the first term of first year. There's a, a, a mathematics module relevant to the life sciences. And effectively, there's quite a broad participation from relevant disciplines and fields across Trinity College which allows us to deliver on these aims of providing you with this uh, in-depth knowledge of biomedical science. Does anyone have any questions so far? You can take questions at the end or you can call to the stand uh, in the loose hall. Now, I just want to give you then a, a sort of visual idea of the uh, kind of philosophy behind the degree, the, the approach that we use. So we're thinking about human health and disease, and we really set out to describe it from the sort of biological perspective, from cell biology to tissue to organ to organ system level. And this and its dysfunction in disease along the same uh, line of hierarchy but we want to be able to explore the interface between health and disease and how we can prevent disease and how we can intervene in disease. Okay? Now, some aspects of this type of interface are pharmacological, so drugs. Some might be lifestyle related, so diet, exercise. And some factors that affect disease might have a more social dimension. And all of these things are considered as part of the curriculum, and we include actually input from the Department of Public Health in Trinity, Public Health and Primary Care, who undertake epidemiological studies which look at not the mechanisms necessarily of disease at root level, but where disease occurs and how it occurs and who gets it. And so this is all built into our understanding. This... Uh, slide is called curriculum at a glance i have um, flyers of this available at the stand in loose lower and i think this is a useful thing uh, for people to consult when they're considering well what does the program involve how is it structured because here we show the structure over year one two three and four and i'm drawing your attention to the fact that all elements of the program map to either uh, of one of three thematic areas. Okay? So we have basic human biology, we have applied biomedical science. In order to interact effectively with this, you must set a good foundation in this. And all along through the course, we're interested in the development of core competencies, particularly related to uh, research. So within the degree, we have a definite research theme which runs across the four years and is focused on developing uh, in students 
a good understanding and set of and skill set in relation to medical research. So this is actually quite a useful uh, diagram to allow you to see what, what you'll actually be doing. So each entry here is the name of a course, okay? And all of these courses then can be assigned to one of these thematic areas. So it gives you an overview uh, in terms of over time and theme dependent. I can uh, pull out from that the example of how we might consider a given disease in the, the Human Health and Disease Programme and how we would go about describing it. So let's take the example of diabetes. How would we provide a sort of whole picture of this in the degree? Well, we know that diabetes, uh, effectively, the, the disease of diabetes mellitus results from an inability to control levels of sugar in the blood, levels of glucose in the blood. And that can be for one of two reasons. Either we don't make the hormone that helps us to control sugar in the blood, or we're unable to respond to the hormone that helps control sugar in the blood. So how would we uh, build up a picture of this? Well, in first year, uh, we would be describing what glucose does in the body principally focusing on its role as a fuel source, which is something that you, anyone who's doing leaving cert, I'm sure, is doing anyway. And then to understand its role in cell biology, we need to describe cell biology, what, human, what tissue types exist in the body, and what the role of genes are in terms of cell processes and the activity of proteins in the cell. We can take this to a more systems level in second year, by studying physiology and anatomy. And for example, we could bring into this picture the study of the physiology of the guts and the physiology of how hormones work. And that will help us to build up the picture. By third year, uh, referring back here to the overview diagram, we see that applied biomedical sciences comes in as a theme. And so in third year, you'll be doing courses, or as we call them, modules, which would focus on disease, so gut and hormone related disease. There are also modules in nutrition and dietetics, diagnostics, and also actually the exercise uh, module, all of which have an impact in uh, producing a sort of holistic or rounded idea of an understanding of diabetes as a disease and how it is treated. In fourth year, we can outline the uh, how it's diagnosed, how it's currently treated, but also where it arises uh, and who gets it and how we can prevent it. Okay, so really across the degree, because of the input of so many different disciplines, we can give a very uh, in-depth but also wide-ranging uh, explanation of, of how diseases work. Just take you back to the, this slide for a moment. I did mention this recurrent research theme, which culminates in fourth year with a three month research project, which would normally be undertaken with researchers here in Trinity. But you do have the opportunity, uh, based on mar merit, academic achievement, and motivation, mainly in your third year, to compete then for a place to undertake this final year project at one of our Erasmus exchange sites. We currently have two, the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, which is actually the home of the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology, or at the University of Göttingen in Germany. So you could undertake your final year project in a research lab at one of these two uh, prestigious European institutes. What will you be able to do by graduation? Uh, from the academic perspective, we kind of place this within, under the heading of what are the learning outcomes, what would we like you to have achieved overall from the programme. So we want you to be able to integrate fundamental biology into a picture of how the body works and then relate this to the signs and symptoms of disease, right from the molecular through to the cellular tissue organ and organ systems level. 
we want you to be able to evaluate and explain the impact of pharmacology and lifestyle related and dietary factors in the treatment and prevention of disease, be able to have a very good idea of how biomedical research works, be able to appraise scientific data, and really the culmination of the research theme should allow you to design, conduct, analyse and evaluate research in biomedicine. And that would really be one of the main things that you could take forward in terms of uh, job prospects. So what next? What are the career prospects? As a graduate, uh, we have our first cohort of graduates this year and we expect those that go to direct employment to go into academic research or into the healthcare sector or research and development, including clinical trials. We think this is going to be an area where there will be opportunities. A number of, quite a number of students will undertake or aim to enter a graduate entry medicine programme. The current fourth years, I'd say about one third of them have taken the GAMSAT examination during their third year. If anyone's familiar with this, this is the examination required to get entry to the, the four-year graduate entry medical programmes. And it's looking uh, like most of these students, if they achieve an upper second class honours degree here, will gain a place in a four-year graduate medical programme. Some other students are interested in, in working more at the interface of academia and industry in pharmaceutical companies, um, particularly in the area of clinical trials. And a further cohort of the students will uh, be planning to undertake PhD studies in medical research. So last year, um, after the last round of the CEO, uh, the points for the course were 500, was 540 for entry. Now, we can recognise within this the major impact of uh, students applying with a first preference for medicine and also applying, putting uh, human health and disease on their um, CEO application form. And also last year, th this inflates the points. This was further, there was a further points inflation last year as a consequence of the uh, bonus points for higher maths. So it went to 540. I imagine it could be something similar um, in the coming year. This is not the only way to access the programme. Uh, for certain people, it may be of relevance to look at something called the Higher Education Access Route or the Trinity Access Programme. Both offer alternative entry routes which, um, in which the standard CEO application and points uh, tally is not the primary uh, calculation. And we aim to increase the number of students recruited this way and also uh, expand out the, uh, the access to the programme by having accelerated access into second year for people who have carried out a higher national diploma in a relevant subject. These are UK style qualifications which allow students to enter university uh, into second year. Most people, I suppose, will be able to operate on the basis of the uh, CEO application and the standard points tally. So 540 was the bottom line last year. So if you're interested in this degree and you're still interested after this talk, please call to our stand in Lower. You can pick up a flyer with the curriculum overview. There are students there who, could be able to, who, who would be able to comment on their experience of the degree and if in doubt, please contact me, me at my email address here at the Department of Physiology. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, feel free to come down.